In episode number three of our quick start guide, I'm going to go over succession laws in Crusader Kings 3 throughout this video. This is a real dense subject, and if you get lost, that's totally fine because it'll take some playthroughs to really get it down. I've been playing since the game came out, and I still struggle with understanding certain things. My biggest tip before we even get started is to save and try certain things out to see how it manipulates your succession until you fully understand it. Trial and error is a big part of the early process of learning learning in Crusader Kings 3. Um, I unfortunately do not have the console version of this game yet, so I'll be doing this on PC, but it will effectively be the same for the exception of navigating the UI in both PS5 and Xbox, of course. Um, I have a full-length video that goes into more detail about this subject linked in the upper right as always, and if you end up finding this video helpful, please don't forget to drop a like, comment, or subscribe on your way out. I cover plenty of Crusader Kings 3 content with all my guides and quick start videos linked at the end of the video and in the pinned comment. But let's get started. So succession and uh, inheritance is gonna be a really big portion of your Crusader Kings 3 playthrough because basically after you've created say a big empire, as soon as your character dies, that empire will be divided up amongst your children depending upon your respective succession laws. So we're gonna start off talking about succession laws and then we're gonna go into how you can possibly remove people from that succession, remove that inheritance, and then we'll kind of close out talking about these title specific uh, successions that you can do and manipulate. So, taking a look back at Apulia here, um, we have to look at some things before we even look at the succession laws. So, here is my land right here, this whole territory, and this is what I own. You'll notice that there's a cool little, like, flare around one flag. That is your primary title, and it shows where the capital of your land is, which is right here. What's important is, if I click this button to Duchy Titles, I will see that this is my Kingdom of Sicily. It's in the Duchy of Apulia, meaning that the Duchy of Apulia is the capital of my realm. That's important because we're about to talk about that in a sec. And if I look at my titles for my character, he has one King title, two Duchy or Dussel titles, and then a series of uh, County titles. So let's go ahead and open up the Realm tab and go into Succession. Now. Before we talk about succession law, it's important to note that you cannot change succession law unless your crown authority allows for it. So in this case, uh, crown authority two allows us to change into any of the partition succession laws. Level three allows us to do all available succession laws. And then level four allows us to just outright designate who our heir is versus it always being whatever the succession law is. So let's go ahead and press this button for changing the succession laws, and we will see that we've got six different succession laws. If you are playing a tribal ruler, someone that is, say, any of the Norse rulers in the first of the start dates, not 1066, then you, were be, you will be locked to confederate partition. All tribal rulers are locked into this until you progress into feudal and then get the respective innovations. You cannot progress into any other succession law. And Confederate is what you're going to deal with the most in the game until you get to the mid-late portions of it. And the way Confederate Partition works is these two paragraphs are going to be your guiding compass. So under Confederate Partition, your titles, that's all nine of these, will be divided equally between your children. New titles may be created for younger realm heirs. Meaning that if I look at these lands, these are all the available duchy titles in my land. You see these two? They're colored in, right? So they've been created. But Salerno and Sicily have not. It even says not created. So that tells me that if I were to have multiple children, uh, let's just say three, then if I were to die, it would create Salerno and or Sicily to give these duchy titles to those children because that's how Confederate partition works. It creates any titles that need be created for this succession. Um, now, the next bit of information is huge. So, upon succession, all titles held by the late ruler, that's me, will be divided amongst their eligible children, meaning people that actually have inheritance. With the player heir always being given the primary title, remember we said that that is, um, let me press this button, that is the Kingdom of Sicily, always being given the primary title, Realm Capital, which is again the Duchy of Apulia, and any direct de jure titles associated with it, meaning any direct counties, anything like that associated with this title. So if I look over here, 
I see. I'll, I'll, I'll uncollapse that. Prince Roger of Sicily. He will be getting the Kingdom of Sicily, the Duchy of Apulia, the County of Apulia, County of Castelgio... I'm, Italian Spartacus just butchered an Italian word right there. But as you can see, as we go through this, he gets these counties. But he will lose two of these titles. Two of them, the Duchy of Calabria and the County of Rosano, will go to Prince Guy of Sicily, my my younger brother, my youngest son, the younger brother of, of Prince Roger, or Roger, if you want to think of it that way. So that is how Confederate partition works. It splits everything up. If I were to have multiple kids, it would create new titles if it needed to. It would distribute those titles as needed to. So basically, all of your titles are distributed to the oldest child with the fewest amount of those titles. For example, all kingdoms are distributed in order. So let's say I had four kingdom titles. The oldest child with the fewest um, uh, 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 empire plus kingdom titles takes priority. So if I have four king titles and no empire titles, the oldest child would get a handful of, uh, of king titles here. If a junior heir received titles, they also are given any lower title that's theirs de jure and receive no more titles in the following step. So that was a super confusing sentence. Trust me, I get it. But essentially the what you have to just think of is your heir is going to get the primary title plus the capital and any handful of remaining titles that don't go out to the other heirs. That's the easiest way to think about it. When you jump into partition, it's basically the exact same thing as Confederate partition, but it will not create titles. And then high partition is again the same thing as Confederate part, or same thing as partition. So no new titles are being created, but your um, primary heir, your player heir, they will receive fifty percent of eligible titles. So it's a little confusing there. But basically, they get half the titles in each step. So king, duke, count, and then the rest are divided up. So it's super confusing. It's the worst part of the game. I'm not even going to lie to you. After that, though, we go into some stuff that's super straightforward. Primogenitor. Under primogenitor succession, your oldest child inherits all of your titles. Ultimogenitor. Under ultimogenitor succession, your youngest child inherits all of your titles. And then house seniority. It goes to the oldest member of your house. So I know that that is super confusing and I know it sucks to deal with and you are going to get confused playing it, I promise. But pretty much just look at this menu. It's going to give you a direct readout of who is going to get what and you can manipulate this. You can get kind of creative with it. So for example here, my character, uh, King Robert, Robert, has the Kingdom of Sicily and with that is the Duchy of Apulia. Well, Maybe we want to switch this around, and I don't really want Calabria to go to Guy. So what you can do with this is, unclick all that away. We're going to go down here to Palermo, where which is de jure the capital of Sicily, the kingdom of Sicily. You'll see this button right here that says move realm capital here. So this is how you can get kind of spicy with your realm succession. So we're going to go back into Realm Succession. We're going to take a look at what's going to happen. Remember, King is going to Prince Roger, and he's getting the Duchy of Apulia because that is where our Realm capital is. And then Guy is getting Calabria. I'm going to press this button. I'm going to press Move. I'm going to... Oops, shit. I'm going to unpause the game real quick. And there we go. So now... Guy will get Apulia and the county of Apulia, and Prince Roger here, or Roger, will receive the Kingdom of Sicily and the Duchy of Calabria. This is a way you can really manipulate who gets what and where it goes. Other ways to do this are actually giving the titles to these characters ahead of time to try and kind of foster growth in that location, or at least try to like remove it from the overall progression of succession that you have in mind. Again, it is super confusing. Don't worry if you get lost. Just kind of keep hitting your head against the wall on it and it will click. And it's going to be different for every character you play and every playthrough, I promise. So let's talk a little bit now about how to remove inheritance. So looking at Prince Guy, 
we have some options that we can do before our character dies to kind of switch around how this all work, plays itself out. So we'll right click on Gi here and we've got a lot of different options. So for one, we've got this one, ask to take vows. So I can basically force my child into the clergy and he becomes a monk. Monks or nuns are not considered eligible. They're not eligible. <laughs> They're not eligible bachelors. They're not eligible for inheritance. So they cannot be factored into your succession. So if I were able to do this, I think I have a hook. Yeah, I can do that. Well, we'll, we'll do it at the end of this section because I, I want to be able to show other things. We'll bring up the succession menu here too. So you can ask them to take vows and that will force them out of succession. Another thing is you can just do the good old fashioned murder. You know, it's worked throughout history. It'll work here. You can do it and get it done with. Now you've got another option. You've got denounce, which will make it so that you can imprison this character. It does not remove them from the line of succession. It just simply makes them able to be imprisoned. And when you're imprison them, you can remove claims to titles. So that's how you could go about it. But the real way you'd want to remove them from succession is just straight up disinheriting them. So it would cost you 75 renown, which I do not have clearly. And I can just simply remove them from the succession outright. Now, let me show you how this would work here. We can ask them to take another way to do it. You could really cheese it is put them in an army and send them out alone and have them die. But I don't encourage that because it's just a little too gamey. Now, if I press use a hook, which would force it to basically go through, I would then just press ask them to take vows. I don't have enough piety for this to work, but you would press this. And if I, since I've got a hook, it would go through and they'd gain the trait monk. So may not inherit titles and may not marry. So that is how you could actually manipulate the eligibility of succession of your children if you've got way too many or you maybe just want to focus on a very specific one to have him get the title. I don't know why he's on death's door. I, this is an old save, so everyone's near death for some reason. But let's move now to special laws. And this is the last little subject we're going to talk about, but here is our Kingdom of Sicily title. And if you're playing any of really of the of the northern factions in 1066, you'll be able to take advantage of this almost right away. But you have this little thing right here that shows you your current holder, the line of succession, like who has claim basically in line to this title through both male preference and confederate partition law. But you've got this ability right here, add law. So if you add a law, it basically makes special succession laws for that title. So you've got feudal elective, Saxon elective, Scandinavian elective, and Tanistry elective. And a lot of these will be part of certain playthroughs just by default. Like Tanistry will be part of all these Irish playthroughs. Scandinavian elective will be part of any Scandinavian culture. Or if you play in um, 867 and play as Rurikid, you will have the ability to adopt Scandinavian elective. So this basically is a way to essentially vote for who takes this title versus it going through the standard succession of a confederate partition and what have you. Um, these are pretty cool and really easy and nice and lovely to use if you can actually use them. Not everyone ha can use them. It's sometimes barred by specific cultures. Like I said, Scandinavian elective or Tanistry elective, or just it requires a heap of prestige to actually get access to, or you might need a specific innovation. So be mindful of those things as you navigate them. The other thing that you can do, uh, depending on your actual succession, is just straight up destroying a title. If you destroy a title and you don't have Confederate partition, because remember that creates titles, then that title will not be created for succession and you would just have your children create the title that you would want them to inherit once they've actually inherited everything else. That is another mouthful of a sentence, but still. That pretty much concludes everything on succession. And again, I do have a much broader video that goes in the ins and outs of this with far more uh, examples showing you more children and stuff like that. I just wanted to give you kind of a quick crash course. As I've said, this is probably the hardest subject to deal with in the game, and it is the one that will frustrate you the most in the beginning. Like I said, save your game and just keep trying different combinations of things to do. Uh, maybe if you do this with your Irish playthrough with a tutorial, you'll get a good feel for it. it. It's just all about manipulation, as it was historically speaking. So if you just kind of get in that mindset of trying to 
Not necessarily game the system in a bad way, like sending a single child out to war and having him die because he's alone in an army, but learning how to move your capitals, how to disinherit or force uh, vows onto certain children, stuff like that. You'll really get the ability to get a good lock on your succession. But if you have any questions, anything else you need help in, by all means, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. But have a good one and take care.